hi guys welcome back to another video so in this video we'll be going through about vector for e coli so we'll be studying the entire phenomena all the plasmids all the designs for plasmid and what all are required for a vector for being a vector for e coli all right so let's uh, move on with this so so there are basically three types of cloning vector which are based on different sites of different types of bacteria bacteria phage so i'll just read as you can see on the screen so there are first number one type is cloning vector based on e coli plasmids second type is cloning vector based on m13 bacteriophage dna and the third type is cloning vector based on lambda bacteriophage dna so i'll be going through all of it illustratively so stay tuned and watch the video till that so moving on from here on so let's talk about cloning vector based on E. coli plasmids. So why is it good? So you can just clearly see the reasons uh, clearly stated for being a good plasmid as it has uh, variably good features as, a, as being a plas cloning vector. So it has a small size. It has presence of selectable as well as scorable marker genes. So I'll be explaining about scorable marker genes in much more in detail in my coming videos and all of it and the third point which says that the unique restriction sites for number of endonucleases also the advantages of small size plasmid so there are some of the reasoning that i found that uh, that is something that needs to be provided to y'all when you're studying each point all right so why small size acts as a good feature so advantages of small site plasmid is much easier to handle, more resistant to damage by shearing and is readily isolated from host cell. And it also has a low molecular weight or small size plasmids are usually present in multiple copies. That is pretty much obvious. So let's talk about selectable markers. So coming to selectable markers, uh, let's talk about the antibiotic resistance gene, which is the antisin resistance gene, which is very much common and is present in almost every uh, cloning vector. Secondly is tetracycline resistant gene, uh, chlorophenicol resistant gene, canamycin resistant gene, vancomycin resistant gene, streptomycin resistant gene, and many more other types of resist antibiotic antibiotic resistant gene are there, which are which helps us in them finding out the transformed cells. All right. So the third point, which is uh, the scorable marker, can be GF which is the green fluorescent protein gene like Z gene which causes beta galactosidase or alpha complementation which I have already mentioned in my second or third video so also selectable in school market is important for screening of recombinant clones so these two are very much important as I said these are very important for screening and or, or selection of recombinants or transformed cells and also thirdly, the presence of unique uh, restriction sites for large number of endonucleases such as multiple cloning sites provide the huge option of cloning of insert DNA as, as clone vector would be in the frame. So multiple cloning site is very important. So from there, it makes multiple copies of clones of itself. So as you know, that's a simple division process that takes place inside the bacterium and the foreign DNA is present in it. So MCS is very important and should have unique restriction sites for a large number of endonucleases. So moving on from there on. So let's talk about the first plasmid, which is the PBR322 plasmid uh, cloning vector. So let's go through some of the basic things at uh, the naming and everything like where it all started from. So the, it was the first vector which was developed from E. coli natural plasmids. The name PBR322 conforms with the standard rules for vector nomenclature, where P stands for plasmid, BR identifies the laboratory in which the vector was originally constructed, and BR is the name of the scientists or the researchers who developed PBR322. PR stand, now in this PR, BR stands for Bolivar and Rodriguez. Rodriguez. And the third, 322 distinguishes this plasmid from other plasmids are developed in the same laboratory and therefore plasmids called PBR 325, 327, 328 are also there. So numbering is different so that one can be distinguishable from the other. So moving on from there. So let's go through some of the properties of PBR 322 plasmid vector. 
So talking about it has a size of 4.362 KB. All right, and also PBR322 contains ampicillin resistance and tetracycline resistant gene of natural plasmids, uh, which is RSF2124 and PSCA101 respectively. Also replication of uh, also replication element origin of replication, which is uh, like the core element of a plasmid, is a P uh, PMB1 or COL E1 like plasmid. So the defers it has either of the two. So these are some of the points that you need to buy heart when these are questions, common questions which may come in your competitive exams or in your board exams or any college SEM exams. All right. And thirdly, the small size and high copy number and two sets of antibiotic resistant gene are advantages of this cloning vector. All right. So this has a small size, it has a high copy number confirm many clones and it has two sets of antibiotic resistance gene which is the tetracycline and the ampicillin resistant gene which is pretty much advantageous and does the work of cloning vector so, uh, let's talk about the insertion and inactivation of antibiotic resistance gene so talking about this uh, let's talk let's go deep inside this so talking about this, the insertion of gene of interest in either tetracycline resistant gene or ampicillin resistant gene disrupts the functionality of gene. So talking about this, so when we insert a foreign DNA, any foreign DNA on the targeted DNA which we want to clone in a bacterium. So in this, what happens that uh, when we insert the gene in either of the tetracycline resistant gene part or in the ampicillin resistance gene part. So let me just take a marker. Yeah. There we go. So this is, let's say, this is the ampicillin resistant gene part, and this is the tetracycline resistant gene part. All right. So in either of the two, if the uh, foreign DNA gets inserted here or here, it forms insertion inactivation. So what does it mean? So whenever we insert a foreign DNA in either of the two, it sets off the resistance capability. All right, so let's go through the second point, which is very important. So now we'll get to know which gets off, which of the two gets off when insertional, uh, when foreign DNA gets inserted in the vector. So let's talk about BAMH1. BAMH1, let's say a restriction endonuclease enzyme, which cuts at the site so that a foreign DNA can be inserted. So it cuts at PBR322 at just one position within the cluster of genes that codes for resistance of tetracycline. So let's say this part has been cut with BAMH1. Well, let's take it. Let me take a different color. All right. So let's say this part gets cut by BAMH1 so that a new uh, DNA can be inserted in the BAMH1 side. So as you can see, I'll circle this part. All right. So as this thing, this uh, what you call the foreign DNA gets inserted in the tetracycline part. So what happens is now that as long as we insert this, this the activity of tetracycline resistant gene, this is the tetracycline part entirely, gets shut off. So it is no more useful now. So the function of resistance tetracycline gene cluster, which is present here, as you can see it's written, gets off. So the function of this gets zero. So it gets your minimized zero or it gets off or it does not have any function after it gets inserted in the tetracycline part whereas the ampicillin resistant gene is still in function and still has the uh, characteristics where why for why why for it it is placed there or it is present here so let's read through uh, for getting all of the clarification so recombinant pbr322 molecule one that carries an extra piece of dna in the damage one site is no longer able to confer tetracycline resistance on its own so tetracycline activity or the tetracycline resistant gene activity gets no longer or gets switched off completely. So this is called insertional inactivation. So the activity of tetracycline part gets inactivated completely. All right. But as you can see, the third one cells containing this recombinant PBR322 molecule are still resistant to ampicillin. So this ampicillin part is still active. This is not inactivated, whereas tetracycline part is inactivated. All right, but it is sensitive to tetracycline. All right, obviously, it has to be because it's present in the tetracycline region, but the region is inactivated entirely. All right, but this is activated. 
So let's keep this video till here. I'll be explaining about more other uh, plasmids and more other uh, recombinant patterns and all of these uh, technical terms related to this. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.